Uh, hello everyone. I wanted to give the post match analysis for the South Africa Pakistan match. Obviously, I'm smiling, but trust me, it was a nail biting match. I said in my preview, it's a big match for both teams. And uh, unlike all the other matches, I mean, today was the most closest finish in this World Cup so far. I mean, there hasn't been a match that was as close as today. I'm happy that South Africa won. I was obviously supporting South Africa, even my prediction South Africa. But I am actually very unhappy about how South Africa played today, especially the way Markram batted. I mean, he got 91 runs. The scoreboard says he's the top scorer, but there was absolute nonsense batting, senseless batting from Aidan Markram. It's unimaginable. I mean, even when the fifth wicket fell and David Miller and uh, Markram were batting, South Africa still needed half of the runs. It was around 130 for five, I guess. And South Africa still needed a lot of runs. Well, I think it was four. And at that point, Markram, I mean, still needing around 130 to win and just around five wickets in hand. Last recognized pair, Miller and Markram. Markram tried to play a slog sweep of Usama that just luckily evaded the field. And there were two attempts that he made that was almost out. And I couldn't believe it. I mean, you are the senior, one of the senior most batsmen in the team. Uh, you are the vice captain of the team. He was the captain in the other match where uh, Bavuma was not playing. How can you be so thoughtless? I mean, and irresponsible. I mean, you are the senior most, one of the senior most batsmen and the vice captain of the team. I mean, it, it's shocking. I always criticize batsmen, and I have a right to criticize because these players are professionals. These are international players playing for their country, playing in a World Cup, you expect them to have more sense. Towards the end of the match, I mean, my mother was asking me, uh, or rather telling me, I mean, why does, why do these uh, top order batsmen give so much stress and pressure to the lower order batsmen? And I said, exactly. I said, why do they have to do that? And the way sometimes, it's not just this match, a lot of matches, when you see the top batsmen in the dressing room and you see their sorry, sad faces, you, I always think to myself, I mean, if you had shown one-tenth of this responsibility and this emotion when you had your bat in your hand, your team wouldn't be in this position. Obviously, good wickets, you, get, you can lose wickets. But I mean, at this level, you are not expected to play a bad shot. Even one shot, because you are a professional. You have played so much cricket. You are playing for the country. Even one bad shot, you can't say, oh, it was just one bad shot, because you are not expected to do that. Do that. You are a professional. So, Aiden Market, there was a bit of me that was saying it to myself, I mean, my prediction might go wrong and even South Africa will lose. But I even thought to myself, South Africa, I wouldn't mind South Africa losing just for Aiden Markram to learn a lesson. But then I thought, no, I still want South Africa to win. Obviously, uh, half of me is South African. So, I didn't want that to happen. But Aiden Markram, I hope he learns his lesson because that's not how to bat when you are a vice captain and, and South Africa were 235 for 5. I mean, they needed like uh, 35 runs to win with 60, 70 balls to go. And I mean, it was like four runs and over. You could just tap the ball here and there, take the singles, take three, four runs and over and you could easily win. And towards the end, I mean, the shot that he got out to was an absolute shocker. And look at how the uh, match turned out. It was so much stress on the lower order, which you don't want. I mean, South Africa could have easily lost this match. And at the time when Miller and Markram were batting, I mean, and Janssen, there was a part of me, I mean, normally my sixth sense is right. I had a feeling that Maharaj would have a play in this match when he batted. And I, I have a 100% trust in Maharaj. He's not a top order batsman, but he has a very good technique. I mentioned in my videos as well that Maharaj is a good batsman. And he, the most important thing about Maharaj is that he has a good head. I mean, he keeps his head, he keeps his cool. And that is the most important thing about batting. Obviously, you need to have a basic technique, but the more, more, as important or even more important is to have a good head on your shoulders. And I have to say something about the commentators. With all due respect, a lot of commentators, even if you, even if they see the most ugliest six, cross batted six, slog sweep six, they would say, "Oh, that's an excellent shot." And if you got out to the same ball, the same commentator would criticize you for getting out. Commentators always go with the flow of the match. They do not, I'm not, some of them have strong opinions, but 90% of them, they just go with the flow of the match and they just support what's happening. I mean, like I said, I mean, they play an ugly shot that you could have got out. Instead of saying you didn't have to play that shot at that moment, they would say, oh, great shot. And if you get out, they will say, uh, bad shot. 
and Janssen, even Janssen when he came, he played 20. Yeah, 20 good runs, but I mean, Janssen didn't have to hit that six at that point and, and play that shot that he got out. I mean, at that point, when you have four runs uh, to, knee, uh, to win and over, I mean, you don't have to play that kind of shot. Sorry, I might sound a bit animated, but I don't understand how professionals, obviously I take cricket seriously and I don't understand how professionals can bat like this. But anyway, two points for South Africa. So I think they are almost level with India now. And tomorrow there is a big New Zealand-Australia match coming up. And before the preview, I did say that uh, Janssen and Shamsi would play, have a vital role to play today. Janssen getting those two early wickets. And uh, Shamsi actually got four wickets. I did say South Africa would probably play the second spinner. And thankfully, they played Shamsi. Shamsi took four important wickets. He went for 60 runs, 10 overs, which is a bit expensive, but that's fine. He took four wickets, important wickets. And Pakistan, I mean, at a point where around 134 for four, they looked like collapsing. And then they had an excellent partnership. Uh, South Shakil uh, got a 50, Babar Azam got a 50. And at a point, uh, Pakistan, I think, were like 225 for five or four and they had 37 overs and there was still 13 overs to go and Pakistan looked like they were going to get 300 plus and Pakistan still messed up like I've said in my previous videos I always said this is what the pro biggest problem with Pakistan is they form small partnerships they get into good positions but they don't capitalize they were in such a good position with five wickets in hand and 13 overs they just needed a few more overs of good batting uh, taking seven, eight runs, I mean, taking the singles, twos, odd four, and then going hard at the five overs, but they suddenly lost wicket and they got 270, which was a below pass score, I mean, especially considering the start they got. And in the towards the end, and I was telling my mother many times that South Africa are so lucky that the target was just 270. Because uh, South Africa could afford to play slow because the required run rate was less. And South Africa got out to a good start as well. The run rate was good. So towards the end, the required run rate was always just around 4 above. It never went close to 5. It was around 4. And South Africa easily could afford to play the dot balls and that helped them a lot. If Pakistan had got another extra 30 runs, it would have been so much pressure on South Africa's low order because you don't have wickets and you have to go at a run rate of 6-7 which is even more pressure and Pakistan would have won actually. So uh, that was important as well. And I wasn't very impressed with Babar Azam's captaincy. Obviously you can't compare him to the great Imran Khan but Babar Azam at a point where Miller and Markram came he could have attacked and he could have got wickets, he could have put a slip in but he was uh, letting runs go. So that wasn't very impressive from Babar Azam uh, as a captain, as a player he's good batsman and Shaheen Afridi I said before the World Cup he wasn't in good form but I expect him to come back to form and uh, he's actually the uh, highest wicket taker of the tournament so far so well done to him and Pakistan tried their hard out towards the end so well tried well tried to them uh, Rauf, uh, Shaheen Afridi all tried hard so well done to them as well great game of cricket uh, so tomorrow Pakistan New Zealand uh, sorry, New Zealand Australia big match and to all junior cricketers and to all I mean uh, today's game is a big lesson on how important every wicket is I mean I've been saying in a lot of videos I've been critical of batsmen throwing away their wickets but one wicket can do this to a team and uh, um, I hope Ma Aiden Markram has learned his lesson and a lot of batsmen because I mean you, in cricket there's a good old saying do not leave it to the next batsman. If you can finish it off yourself, you should finish it. Do not leave it to the next batsman. Because the next batsman, the pitch might be different for him. I mean, the bowlers. I mean, when you are on top of the bowling, when you are in good form, continue that and finish the match. Do not leave it to the next batsman. Anyway, that's quite an animated uh, uh, post-match analysis from me. I mean, I, was quite, I mean, I thought South Africa were going to lose a match that was in their palm. But still, well done to Maharaj uh, for keeping his cool and to all the lower order batsmen. I mean, they shouldn't be put under so much pressure. But well done for coming through. Two, uh, two points for South Africa, important two points. And it's the first time South Africa is uh, beating Pakistan in an ICC tournament in 10 years, I heard. So anyway, uh, that's it from me. Thank you so much. Uh, take care and God bless you.